Hello there, this is some story, isn't it? We now know who Gareth Southgate's full-time successor is. Let's get right into it. Rob Dawson is here. He is totally across this story. Rob, this seems to have escalated very quickly. I mean, yesterday people were talking about Pep Guardiola. Could England persuade him ETCSE at E and now it's Thomas Tuchel. How's it happened? Yeah, well, look. The people I was speaking to yesterday poured a little bit of cold water on the Pep Guardiola story. My understanding there was that, yes, the FA made a very initial approach to him last July, so a few days after Gareth Southgate had resigned, as they did a number of managers at the time. Very tentative just to test the waters, and they weren't giving anything in terms of encouragement, shall we say, from the Guardiola camp, and that's the only contact they had. So there was contact, which is quite why the media reported the story as they did, but I don't think the FA ever thought it was going to happen. I think from an FA perspective, from the big bosses, it would have been the dream ticket to appoint Pep Guardiola, the best manager of his generation without a doubt. Somebody who would give England every chance of winning a major trophy, but I don't think the FA bosses ever thought it was going to happen, so they looked elsewhere. Why has it happened now? Because you're right, it's happened very, very quickly. I think what's happened with Lee Carsley in this international break has focused the minds and brought the FA's plans forward quite simply. England lost to Greece in a pretty abject fashion 2-1 when it could have been 4-1 and Lee Carsley in truth, great coach that he is, lovely guy as he is, struggled, I think with the media duties and some mixed messaging coming back from him so I think that's when the FA thought right enough's enough. We thought about Lee Carsley as an option, it's not going to work, we need to move forward here. Thomas Tuchel was always on their short list of possible candidates and they've accelerated it and moved very quickly. He's out of work having left Bayern Munich in May so was available and clearly the negotiations have gone pretty quickly and pretty effectively to get to a point where here we are now with a news conference scheduled for lunchtime at Wembley tomorrow to confirm that the man on your screen, Thomas Tuchel, the former Chelsea, Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern Munich manager is now the England manager and I don't think even 24 hours ago we thought that was likely. Rob, eyebrows will be raised of course with disappointment, he's German, is England's third non-English manager. Are you surprised that the Football Association have not gone for an English coach and is it maybe a sad indictment perhaps of the lack of quality of English managers who could potentially do the job? I think there's an awful lot of people who will see it that way, Darmish. When we speak to the chief executive of the FA, Mark Bunningham, tomorrow that will be a key question for him. Is appointing a German coach as the men's England manager an admission of failure for the FA who are in charge of coach education in this country? Are we saying that too many young English coaches are not coming through and are good enough? Look, I can understand that argument, I can understand that point of view, but let's be honest, Graham Potter and Eddie Howe, two English people, two English managers who were on the FA shortlist, one of whom in Graham Potter is absolutely available and could have started the job tomorrow, were not even consulted for the role. Eddie Howe, of course, is in post at Newcastle, but with his situation there, the FA you would have thought might want to explore with a new football director at Newcastle whether that relationship was going to work and whether Eddie Howe might be available. The FA chose not to, so clearly employing a homegrown manager was not top of their wish list, and I think what Thomas Tuchel does provide is a track record of winning trophies, and you can't say that about Eddie Howe, you can't say that about Graham Potter. So the FA have decided that it's more important to get a winner in, somebody who in Tuchel's case is particularly good at winning knockout matches, he's proved that in all the cup competitions he's had in France, in Germany and in England with the hope of winning things. So I think it's very clear from this appointment that the priority is to get a manager who they think can win a major trophy for England, finally get them over the line after Gareth Southgate brought us so close to two European Championship finals and didn't quite manage to deliver a trophy. We know about the support of the England fans and we saw that connection that Gareth Southgate built up certainly for the majority of his time in charge. Do you think there might be on that subject of nationality a pushback from some sections of the England support? I think there will be from some sections but not all sections and it's interesting that we're running a poll since we broke this news exclusively that Thomas Tuchel was the favourite to take over at lunchtime there will be a backlash from some sections of the England support. There will be a backlash almost inevitably from some sections of the English media as well. Thomas Tuchel will have a hard time of it at times, we know he's a feisty character, we know he has a strong personality, he speaks his mind, he has fallen out with bosses at various clubs in the past. There will be plenty of people in the media who will be poking that, poke Thomas Tuchel with a stick see if you can get him to react. 
Give us a good headline and there'll be some sections of the England support who will want him to fail without shadow of a doubt so that saying look proof that we should have had an English coach in charge of the England team, but the FA will have made a very sober and objective decision in. Considering all of those options and they clearly think that the tactician, the type of football that he plays, this high-octane football as it's described with a high press, lots of attacking players on show, very positive on the front foot, played through the thirds very quickly. That's the sort of football they want to see this England team play, but ultimately the FA will be judged now as Thomas Tuchel will on whether the England men's team can deliver silverware. Rob, Thomas Tuchel has had issues, shall we say, with club hierarchies in the past. Very much so. These questions will be asked as well about how he's going to, let's say, get on with the FA's hierarchy. Do you think it's very different that he won't have to necessarily be dealing with directors and chief executives day in, day out like he might have had to have done if he was in a club job compared to the national job? That's a really good point, Darmish, and maybe yes, maybe that's the case, but I think what we don't know and the big unknown here is how Thomas Tuchel is going to adapt to being an international manager. He's never done it before, and we know it's a very different environment to club management. We're seeing, I think, a trend in modern football where the best coaches who take charge of national teams are specialists. They do the national job and it's very, very different because look, Thomas Tuchel has always been able to at Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich and Chelsea buy the talent that he needs to fill his squad and get it to play the way he wants. If he's struggling for a left back, he can go out and buy a left back. The clubs he's been at have had huge resources. Well, England have got a real dearth of left-footed defenders at the moment, and he can't just go out and buy somebody to solve that problem. He will also only see the players once in a blue moon, and this is something Gareth Southgate spoke about a lot. Look at Lee Carsley in this last international break. He tried to change the way England play, put all of those attacking players on show, and he said they'd only had pretty much 20 minutes on the training field to give it a go and prepare for that. There'd been two training sessions building up to that game that'll be very different for Thomas Tuchel. How will he adapt to that lack of time, that lack of contact with the players? Clearly the FA think he's going to adapt well and it'll suit him, but I think the pudding is in the eating. We'll see how that develops in his time as England manager. One man he has already worked with is the England captain Harry Kane. I'll get your thoughts on that in a second, but first of all, Kane himself has been speaking about Tuchel before this news came out this evening. Let's hear what he had to say. Well, to be honest, I don't know. I haven't been told anything. So, yeah, until it's announced, obviously, I can't really comment, but we have to wait and see. Obviously, I know Thomas well from last year and fantastic coach, fantastic person. So I'm sure the guys at the FA will contact me when they know more about it. Yeah, and that was just to repeat before the news that Rob brought us about half an hour ago was made public. Interesting hearing him say that, you know, he knows him from last season at Bayern Munich. He scored a lot of goals under him, and at a time when people are just starting to ask questions about Kane's plays in this England team, how significant could this appointment for him be? Hugely significant for the England captain, and that little clip we played for him there. It made me feel like the England captain knew that Thomas Tuchel was about to sign a contract to become the new England manager. Listen, Harry Kane is the epitome of a brilliant diplomat. He would not have been drawn to say that I don't think if he didn't know it was a fate accompli that his former club manager at Bayern Munich was about to be his new national coach at England. But yeah, it's a huge boost for Harry Kane.